Okay, let me see. Okay, uh, Christopher, would you be able to lead us in prayer today, please? Okay, I'm uh, not sure if Christopher is able to hear us. Can I pray? Um, yeah, okay, okay, Charles, you can go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. Ah, God, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you so much for your care. But most importantly, we thank you that we are part of your body, the church. Now that we are set to continue to learn more about uh, what we are in you as your body, the church, and the local church, most importantly, Lord, I pray that you will continue to give us more insights, help our lecturer, and help us keep us safe, give us steady connection, so that in all your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Okay, so uh, this class we uh, we were studying about the purpose of the local church, the origin of the local church. So we have um, uh, completed uh, most of that section. We were only, um, we had that, la that last chapter remaining, which is about church growth principles. And uh, I had also asked you to watch uh, Dr. Yongicho's video. So if you have watched it, then I think you uh, uh, probably have uh, enjoyed a more exciting version than, uh, you know, my narration of uh, these principles that he shares along with specific examples from his own life. Uh, and we've seen some of the keys that he has given for church growth. Uh, so today we will complete this chapter and then we will move on to uh, the next chapters here in the house of God or the local church. Uh, so as a pastor and a leader, you know, some of the foundational things uh, uh, need to be in place. It's only then that, you know, we can build on it. We can invite people to build together. So things like uh, vision, desire, faith, no, uh, all of these are very, very important for a leader. Uh, and in the principles, we, we uh, had touched upon um, our close fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we said that, you know, not just uh, with respect to a church and our ministry uh, with regard to the church, but every aspect of life um, originates from our fellowship with the Holy Spirit, isn't it? That strength that we get, the leading of the Spirit, and more so uh, when we are leading a church. So that koinonia and partnership, koinonia, which is the fellowship and partnership with the Holy Spirit is very, very important for us. And in the last class, you know, I stopped at uh, uh, this four-step process of incubation. Uh, I am on page 43 uh, in the... House of God, APC publication, um, uh, yeah, APC publication. So if you can open it, open to that and uh, listen along, I think that will be great. So uh, right now I am on page 43 and it starts off with the four-step process. So uh, uh, Dr. Cho shares how in close communion with the Holy Spirit. And you know, he has several teachings on the Holy Spirit where he, he says that uh, it's not just about reaching out to the Holy Spirit for the things that he has to offer or for the power that he has to offer to us, but it's about learning to do life with the Holy Spirit the way we relate to a human being. And, you know, he shares the example of, of a married couple and he says how you know they interact uh, and uh, uh, in, in order to to uh, learn from each other understand share uh, responsibilities so many uh, reasons why they have to communicate so in that way you know he he shares how our fellowship with the holy spirit is key in birthing the work of god and uh, when we have that deep fellowship with the Holy Spirit, uh, he 
communicates right from the depths of god's heart to us and we know one of the works of the holy spirit is to reveal so revelation bring revelation and uh, throw light on what god wants us to know uh, and that's how we are able to receive from the holy spirit so he talks about this four step process where through our relationship with the holy spirit we can receive his um, ideas and then we can sort of give birth to it so he calls it incubation so here he has lift, uh, listed it out and he says that uh, the first thing is intimate relationship with the holy spirit and in faith okay so from that place things get birth now god will put certain things in our hearts but we are also ready to receive it the second thing he writes about is once we receive from god you know what he wants us to do and you know though that that um, uh idea or that intention from god's heart is put into our hearts the next step would be for us to ask for clear cut objectives so uh, we would ask god for more specific things like uh, okay god um you know what what uh, uh, what does the timeline look like uh, and uh, what does the goal look like uh, so you kind of break it down whatever plan god has given you break it down with specifics and seek god and uh, you know wait upon the lord to be inspired by him to get those details so first thing is god puts his purpose his plan into our heart second we um, ask him for specifics so that we can move forward with it then once we have those things we pray for assurance okay because we are clear that it has come from god and god has given us the details of how to uh, uh, do what he has called us to do so we pray for the assurance that okay god i want that peace in my heart i want to know that you are in this you are leading me you will provide for me uh, and you know that uh, i will be able to accomplish what you have asked me to do and finally you know once you have that sense of being assured or confident you begin to thank god you begin to believe it completely because you've received what god has spoken to you so you can release it in the form of declarations or the words that we speak so uh, basically whatever i've shared just now it's what we have learned even in prayer and intercession you know uh, 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 the the way we pray a believing prayer this is how we do it isn't it first we know the will of god and in this case dr cho talks about receiving from the holy spirit okay uh, so obviously we know the will of god from his word and uh, the holy spirit can give us more specifics about what we must do uh in any area of our lives and then you know you move on you move on to to uh, getting the details making the plan uh, and having the confidence and giving thanks to god for what he's going to do through uh, your life and this what dr cho is recommending you know we've already also seen this in the life of abraham so romans 4 uh, is a wonderful example where Abraham God gave Abraham a promise so you know Abraham was in fellowship with God unlike a lot of people during his time so God spoke to Abraham and God revealed to Abraham his purpose how he would have descendants how those descendants will be greater than the number of stars in the sky the um, sand of the seashore and God also gave him the specifics right like 400 years the descendants they would go into captivity and then they will come out of captivity so a lot of details so abraham kind of knew which way god is leading him and one very specific promise that god gave him was the birth of his son isaac right because only from there uh, uh, all this was to be fulfilled and then we read about abraham how he was confident against all odds god gave him that assurance by faith he stood firm on the word of god and he saw the fulfillment uh, of god's word you know not quickly uh, it took uh, you know 25 years for him to see the fulfillment but we we notice the journey once uh, uh, this this truth was put inside him god's plan was put inside him you know he went through all these stages and we also read about him in romans 4 thanking god praising god well before isaac arrived 
No, and finally, when Abraham had done all these things, and Dr. Cho calls this incubation, now you go through this process, uh, and uh, you're waiting on the Lord, and finally it happens, right? Uh, finally, the dream comes to pass. You give birth. In other words, incubation. You give birth to the promises of God uh, by going through this process. Uh, and here, we should also understand that especially planting a church, raising a church, leading a church. Now, this is a spiritual activity. So uh, with our uh, 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 you know, skills that, that we may have or some of the principles or marketing strategies, you know, there, there can be things out there that can help us do the work of God. So we don't want to belittle those things, but uh, the work of God must be birthed uh, from the word and the spirit. Okay, it's a spiritual activity and the vision has to come from God and we have to carry on with God. So you know, that, there is that need to remember that we are engaging in something that is coming from God and it's only God who's going to lead us ahead in this uh, church planting work and you know, church building up the church. So that is something Dr. Cho uh, shares with us, incubating uh, by fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Then uh, he also talks about how when we are leading a church, we must remember that we are not uh, just going with the motions because uh, it can happen. Sooner or later, you settle into certain formats and uh, we might get comfortable there and think this is it. You know, this is how we do church. This is how we lead people. But he uh, shares from his life how very early on, like he himself was healed of TB. And um, uh, after that, uh, he started sharing the word. He started going out to slums and preaching. And when he saw the needs of people, you know, some in uh, extreme dire need, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit really convicted his heart and said, look, these are the kind of people that I want you to preach to. And they are in need. They are in spiritual need. And so when they're in spiritual need, they need to know about the salvation uh, that comes through Jesus Christ. They need to know about forgiveness. They need to know spiritual realities. Uh, and, you know, they're in physical need. So uh, they, they need healing. They need finances. Uh, you know, they need so many things. They need spiritual blessings as well as uh, physical material blessings. So when you preach to them, and this is what God put on his heart. When you preach to them, don't preach for the sake of preaching. Okay, don't um, share for the sake of sharing. But preach to demonstrate the power of God because there is a need for people to experience the power of God. Preach to meet the needs of the people okay? uh, and preach to release the blessings of God. So uh, he shares about how he was very intentional in um, the way he went about preaching, the way he, he went about um, imparting into the lives of the people. And he also saw that change. He saw that change as he was ministering to the people. So uh, the point he's making is that when we are ministering, there has to be life transformation. If it's just about you know doing an activity, running the church and having a big church, and we're just happy with those kind of outcomes, uh, it sounds good. But ultimately, are the people being impacted? Uh, are there spiritual needs met? You know, he, he, he talks about prosperity of spirit, soul, and body, where they are blessed in every way. Are the people being blessed in every way? That's the question we need to ask. And when we do that, when we minister in that manner, you know, uh, uh, pe God, God's people experience, um, you know, who God is in their lives. And uh, that kind of from there on, they too will, will uh, uh, propagate the gospel. They too will uh, demonstrate the gospel through their lives. So it's important to impact lives. It's important to see life transformation uh, as part of church ministry. Then uh, he talks about equipping and engaging believers in ministry. Now, uh, when we talked about um, you know the structure in the church, we said that there were... Um, deacons who were chosen and then eventually you know the uh, pastor's role became important so even in the early church 
believers were ministering right so uh, it was not just one person but you see various roles elders you had elders and then as you study about uh, uh, the people who worked along with paul he writes to so many co-workers fellow workers in christ jesus so that a lot of people believers engaging in ministry and that's nothing new so dr cho shares how we must equip believers we must engage believers in the ministry it's not just the work of the senior pastor so what he started doing is he started engaging cell leaders and uh, cell groups are a very huge part of his church and he talks about how uh, the cell leaders are kind of the main people in the church who take care of the people who um, uh spiritually and even you know their their material needs whatever that might be they visit they uh, spend time with family so they take care of the people really well and in addition to that so they are the ones who also engage in evangelism so cell leaders have a very very important part to play in the church uh, in the yard of the gospel church so uh, this shows us that people no matter what um you know uh, capacity they are at depending on the grace that god has given them you know each one can engage in the work of the ministry okay and uh, this is how the church grows it's not just by uh, the pastor or the leaders doing the work but the whole church with all their uh, you know gifts and grace and abilities engaging together that you actually go ahead and win more people so there's a lot more said about the uh, cell groups here where you know he says that um, uh, uh, in fact the pastor himself right he's not able to do much step out and do much visit people and all that but the church started uh, multiplying exploding in numbers because of the cell group leaders okay and um, uh, yeah i am uh, actually in in his book and in his uh, uh, sharing in the seminar he shares how uh, many of them are women okay many of them are women but uh, he and the leadership they encourage them and said you can do this and equip them so uh, once they equip them it was uh, it was wonderful they had the confidence to step out and then they were impacting so many lives and the church just started growing in numbers so uh, that's a little bit about engaging every believer uh, and here there is a review um, written by one of a uh, one theology student and she shares about how uh, um, you know this church even though it's a large church you can see the work of the spirit you can see the life transformation um, in in those who attend that church the services are very vibrant they are relevant okay and uh, uh, that though it's a large church you know there's something special about what's going on there and uh, dr cho says that you know it's the work of the holy spirit so as he is working in partnership with the holy spirit you can see the demonstration of that power in the house of god or in the church in his local church so these are the principles that uh, he has put across um any any okay samuel i was just going to yeah yeah and uh, yeah christopher that's okay no problem no problem christopher yes samuel please go ahead thank you thank you pastor yeah thank you so much so pastor i uh, this so this i had this thought even before mm. uh, and somehow forgot to uh, mention about it but um i think this whole idea of so when we look at churches uh, we are mm. looking at successful churches young churches church and and even i think uh, ebc also is an aspirational church mm. um, most of the preachers that we see on youtube anyone you know who is mm. successful today mm. so what we see is where they are their current status mm. you know from how god started and used them um uh, i think uh, the big lesson for me and i i think for most of us in this generation where uh you know it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a time of instant gratification you know we order something online today we expect it to come by tomorrow yesterday yeah and <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, we hate right. buffering time, uh, mm. we, all of that. So instant access and everything is instant. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think the preparation time, uh, you know, I, I think it was in uh, Basta Ashish's book on fulfilling, like the greater the purpose, the greater the preparation time or the mm. longer, something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know if, if there is uh, an opportunity, Pastor, for you to share with us or discuss, uh, you know, the, the middle journey. So from the time, okay, uh, you know, God used Pastor Ashish in this year and planted this church. And today the church is this big, but in between that journey, that struggle, you know, ups and downs. Like I remember, uh, you know, once I think it was the Mangalore church and I, I used to worship at APC Central then. Uh, Pastor would finish his sermon and even before the worship team could finish, he would just quietly, you know, uh, from the back door, he would go to, uh, I think he had a flight to Mangalore church. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he had, so, so that. I, I think, uh, you know, spending a little time on the struggle where it's it's not always like, you know, God will call you and there's incubation and there's calling. But from there on, it's not like tomorrow you'll have a congregation of uh, you know, 2,000, 3,000. Because I think, a, um, I don't know if there are a lot of stories. I think there are, but uh, it, these stories don't come in dialogue where pastors have started big. But then because, you know, I think the foundation is not strong or something is missing. Uh, you know, you start big, you make a lot of noise, uh, but then you know, like like a soda thing, you know, just it just dies off. So I don't I don't know if you have examples of that, but mm -hmm. to draw lessons from those instances where um, how it's a, it's a it's an up and down process, and yeah. and how to especially sail through rough waters, you know, especially when it, when it comes to church planting. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, I know Rupa, Sister Rupa has a church. She runs a church. For those of us who run churches, yeah, I think Prabhaka runs a church. But to listen to those st stories where, you know, on day year one, we have 40 congregation members, but year two, it suddenly comes down to 10 or 12. And what do you do then? You know, do you think of closing the church or do you push on and how do you? So along those lines. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Thank yeah, thank you. And uh, uh, yes, uh, that's true. Uh, the incubation is the state where you receive, you hear from God as to what he wants you to do and how he wants you to step out. But then there's the doing, right? So these are two separate things. One is uh, to get the idea. The second one is to implement the idea. And in both cases, we need that fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And uh, no wonder Dr. Cho talked about faith, right? When the going gets tough, you know, the tough get going. So um, faith is required uh, because things may not happen overnight, as Samuel pointed out. Uh, I know in the case of Dr. Cho, I think it took three decades um, uh, to see like exponential growth in his church. Uh, now, not every pastor can probably say that, you know, I hit uh, thousands and tens of thousands of people um, uh, in, in a matter of a decade or things like that. But in the case of Dr. Cho, yes, it was like huge numbers that he's talking about. Now, as we're journeying with God, yes, we do seek uh, expansion, we seek growth. We, and we must really look for it. There's nothing wrong with dreaming of growth and, you know, talking about if God's put in, God's put uh, like a, a billion, a million people in our heart, then talk about it, pray about it, you know, share the vision with the people and move in that direction. Uh, sooner or later, it will happen. But during the journey, right, during the journey, um, uh, ev everyone who is in ministry, I'm sure Prabhakar can share with you and even uh, Sister Rupa and myself, right, myself, I too can share with you, it's it's never been easy. It's never been easy. Um, there are times you, you start off, like initially when I started off uh, serving at uh, the North Church, um, I mean, Pastor Ashish, well, he used to come as well. So I used to minister whenever he rosters me, uh, but then uh, I would kind of uh, oversee in some other activities as well. So he would come, preach and, and go. Uh, and during those days, I remember I thought if when I start when I start preaching, 
I, you know, the numbers will just go up and then there'll be lots of people. But for a couple of years, you know, the, there was a certain number, something like 50 or something. And then uh, it just stayed at, at that. It just stayed at that no matter what um, our team tried to do in, in the north location. And there's also many reasons for that because it's somewhat in the interior. And, uh, you know, uh, only now, like you have a lot of families shifting to that area and colleges uh, and students you know, uh, coming and choosing this this particular area. But back then, it was hard. It was hard. And even if students wanted to come, uh, they were not willing to pay the money to come like inside and uh, attend the church. So there were a lot of challenges. And just to see, uh, you know, the church growing from a certain number to uh, the next number that you're looking for, uh, it was very hard. And uh, to be honest, like you know sometimes you you you're just struggling you're thinking god why like, why is it not happening the way i thought it would happen but that's where the trusting comes in that's where the faith comes in i'm just giving you a very simple example from my journey uh, but i'm sure every pastor every leader goes through things like this uh, and um, yeah and i remember those those days right uh, we still meet in a school we we meet in a classroom it's a lot better now <laughs> but those days you know sometimes the when we plug in stuff then it won't work i remember early in the morning we would start off quite early um, by around six something we will be there the team will be there we'll be cleaning up the place setting it up and all and pastor also used to come very early because the service uh, starts uh, our pre-service prayer starts at 8 a.m so pastor used to come by 7 a.m and all and those days when we, we used to struggle, there were a few volunteers, we would clean everything, we would kind of set up everything. Uh, even pastor would be plugging something in here, something, and then we'd be like, no, 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 pastor, like just wait for uh, the preaching time. You just preach, you know, relax and preach. But even pastor used to help us. Okay, can I help with this? Can I help with that? So when I think about things like this, uh, you know, in the background, there's so much of work, there's so much of patience, uh, there's... Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to put in words what that trusting God really means. But yes, Samuel, it is not easy. Um, and as long as you're willing, as long as you know, that's why that incubation is so important, right? Because if you've heard from God, you know it's God, you're willing to kind of give it your, your everything uh, and, and keep moving forward, even if you don't see immediate results so uh, yeah uh, I, I'll just uh, I just thought I would ask sister Rupa if you don't mind to share briefly your experience as a church planter has it been very uh, like have you seen immediate results or how has it been so once you share uh, I'll take up uh, Christopher's question here uh, yes sister sorry for suddenly asking you to do this Okay, not able to hear you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. It's uh, somewhat faint, sister. Uh, yeah, okay, or not to worry. But, uh, maybe in the next session or something, whenever you're comfortable. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, maybe Prabhakar, Prabhakar, do you have anything to share about the struggles of a pastor? New chapter. Um, yes, pastor. Yeah, yes, briefly. Yes. Yes, pastor. So uh, yeah. basically, uh, uh, currently, I'm just assisting um, uh, my father-in-law. Actually, he's my, he's a pastor here. And, uh, uh, but my ministry experience uh, is like uh, it started uh, actually 22, 23 years ago. Um, and when I was in ninth and tenth, literally, uh, when I was in ninth and tenth, and in my teens, actually 14, 15 years of age, um, in that moment, like God called me for His ministry. That was the first experience I uh, experienced that God is calling. And then um, a strange thing happened, uh, like uh, uh, in our own con congregation. Um, uh, the congregation was like pastorless. I mean, I mean, there was no pastor for a couple of years. So uh, the, which, the ministry which we, are, we were going, uh, our senior pastor who used to live in another, uh, another district, he called me and said, uh, Prabhakar, you have to preach. 
though i will lead the congregation but you have to be the preacher so i said uh, pastor i am like just 14 or 15 years of age i don't know like so he just came and he, he lays his hands on me and, and said you have to preach so from that day onwards i i started like uh, uh, more uh, you know uh, this we are what we are uh, learning now four steps process of incubation i i uh, you know i i felt in um, during those moments and started preaching and by god's grace it 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 was two complete years like two complete years uh, the the church was like uh, all, literally handed over to me and <laughs> most importantly i was i didn't take in baptism during that time even but i was poured with the holy spirit and uh, it god leaded me and then now uh, by coming after that it was long journey um uh, you know uh, being with the servants of god assisting them 22 years of uh, gospel translation experience and all that sharing the podium with uh, pulpit with many uh, servants of god and then now uh, for the past one and a half years i have been completely dedicated myself me and my wife and we are completely assisting pa our pastor so here there are a lot of challenges pastor to be honest and uh, this place is full of uh, non believers and even the people come to the church are very non believers so there is no exact figures we can say that this number of people will come uh, this uh, particular week and uh, during the corona time we have struggled a lot um, as many people know uh, for four to six months the church was completely closed and uh, most of the believe believers who came um, newly they lost their faith so we have to work in, we have start working on them and again visiting our senior pastor is visiting them daily and uh, there are many rallies are coming across here so every day we have to be you know more more uh, you know vigilant about our ministries we can't uh, go out and you know share the tracks we can't uh, have the open meetings and all that so we have to be uh, very vigilant and very uh, but at the same time uh, we are very helpen to uh, continue the sharing the gospel of god and we are going house meetings and one to one you know step process and all that so this is the way pastor uh, our ministry is going on and uh, it's been a wonderful journey uh, by far and i hope god will take us to new avenues and uh, i i know i know someday someday this this all uh, you know, grace will be converted into testimonies so that the multitudes of crowds will come so this is our our, our faith in god amen thank, thank you thank, thank you, you so much uh, prabhakar so um grateful to prabhakar for that uh, thank you for sharing in detail also so uh, uh, two things samuel if you could see one is the preparation that god takes you through before you step into something uh, and then once you step into it you know there there is that struggle of holding on working towards it making better decisions um yeah all of that comes in later so uh, preparation i would i would say the preparation time is uh yeah i i think both both sides there is some sort of preparation happening right to prepare you yeah yeah and just one uh, additional thing i'll just say uh, samuel like i feel for me right uh like initially when when i stepped into this and i had all these grand dreams of how you want to preach to thousands of people and your church is going to explode and this and that but in a way uh the initial phase of the journey it's it's been so humbling <laughs> like you you literally learn to depend on god for the smallest uh, change that you want to see happen because you come to this place and you say god if you don't do it you know like nothing not a feather will move and if your blessing is there yes only then uh, you know that we will see the growth that we are looking forward to and also depending on god god prepares your heart for things like that and um, yeah that's how it is yes thank you thank you yeah, yeah. thank you thanks samuel good question thank you ah uh, yes christopher Please go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, ah, yes, yes, Christopher. You, I saw your uh, hand raised. Yes, yes. Yeah. So the, my, my, uh, I guess it's going huh. to, I mean, sort of put another perspective on on the mix of uh, and the mix that uh, you know, 
uh, I think uh, also ex- exist in uh, India uh, where mm. we have um, you know uh, other religions um, you know which are yeah. you know, yeah. dominating uh, or, or are very dominant and mm. uh, in a sense uh, you know uh, Christianity is 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 a minority so mm. there is obviously um, you know a, a strong um, a domination of of other religions and um, my uh, i mean i'm just trying to i give my perspective of you know you know with the you know, i mean which, which basically plays a part in the in this in this challenge is that mm. um, given that you know india has got this already existing uh, i think there is also a need to to look at uh, you know the um, the uh, the amount of uh, the growth that can then can potentially happen also in uh, other countries uh, you know outside of india uh, mm-hmm. where um, uh, you know that could also add to the growth and obviously with you know with uh, with you know an online um, uh, approach and mm-hmm. reaching out to um, uh, you know to other um, communities and then also setting up churches internationally uh, mm-hmm. which uh, i think may also add to the growth because yes. I mean, i'm just coming back to maybe you know in a, in a in a in a small in a, in a in a smaller context you know where where jesus was not accepted in, in his home uh, in a place um, but um, you know uh, because of you know people who, who who were not willing to listen and not willing to uh, to really um, you know believe that you know G- uh, jesus was able to, was uh, really uh, you know the messiah uh, rather you know he was just uh, you know the car- carpenter son uh, that was a little i mean a little different but i think you know i think that you know india has uh, you know uh, has potential but um, you know it uh, it also has got some limitations mm-hmm. and um, uh, uh, i just thought i'll just i'm you know yeah sure yeah. sure i i see um, where you're coming from So yes sir uh, Christopher I I understand that point um we can look at um you know various options look at different mission fields and that way uh, we can see growth happen in in you know different places not just where where we are but at the same time Christopher uh, I'm thinking that you know when god gives you a vision uh, and uh, many a time it has to do with the territory so it's very hard to give up on that territory uh, and if you ask a lot of church planters they'll tell you not a, not everyone uh, very specifically has a territory in their hearts they might just know that i'm going to plant a church but many people uh, they know that god has called them to a certain place so then it's hard uh, even if it's difficult to serve in a certain place it's difficult to um, not to kind of let go of this one because the work is not happening the way you imagine and then look at new options so i think that can be a challenge but otherwise yes i i do get your point yeah uh yes so uh, in line with the church growth uh something that uh, dr cho mentioned in in his principles i forgot to tell us uh when we talked about the cell group leaders one is that the work of god can be done um in a team work kind of a fashion and at the same time he gives this example of a fishing net so if we want to catch one fish then you know we we will uh, try to use a fishing rod and just get one but if we're looking at uh, you know multitude net breaking catch of fishes then we have to cast out the net so in order for us to cast out the net he talks about having large uh, vol- volunteer teams and having a lot of people in the ministry in the church so it's only when we do it that way that we can impact more lives and he also shares a little bit about how uh, the most effective way to evangelize is uh, through relationships so when when people have really good relationships with others they can share the gospel and then you know uh, you have people giving their life to jesus and uh, being part of the kingdom of god and all of that but 
for that you need a lot of people going and proclaiming the gospel not just the preacher so you know that was one aspect that i missed uh, mentioning so that again helps the growth of the church so these are all uh, things for us to think about and uh, ultimately it's us and the holy spirit and the holy spirit putting in our hearts what he wants us to do and when we are walking with him we will see the growth happen all right so uh, if uh, there are no more additional thoughts or questions uh, we can just jump to the next section here Okay. Yes, yes, Christopher. Please go ahead. One more point uh, I wanted to raise ah, yes. was that um, um, I, mean, I think one of the one of the things that is also you know, um, you know uh, existing also is that you know there are many churches and many pastors, many uh, uh, you know. Uh, um, uh, you know, um, people who are preaching, and uh, you know, some of them are small, some of them are you know really tiny, some of them are you know growing. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I mean, my personal view is that I think sometimes you know it it, it sometimes dilutes the uh, you know the the message, and it also um, in a sense weakens uh, you know the uh, the overall uh, you know. Um, you know, strength of the, of, the, of 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 the churches, particularly when there's you know sometimes you know a little bit of uh, infighting and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, there are uh, you know uh, backbiting and stuff like that, as well as uh, you know uh, you know there's there's this you know pride that you know this is my this is the number I have and that number is you know I have uh, you know th this number and this is you know when we're, when we're talking about growth, we're talking numbers here. So the, I just thought I'll add, I'll add that perspective also. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. I'm just trying to do a little calculation over here. Okay, maybe uh, you, you could do it uh, yourself, uh, but what I was looking at is, you know, like India's uh, population is 1.3 billion. Uh, so uh, even if you take the population of Bangalore and you just try to calculate, I don't know how large the largest church in Bangalore is. Uh, may, I don't know, maybe 10,000 or something. Uh, so if you take that, as the number, as the base number, as a so-called large church, and you just divide. You know, Christopher, you can have a lot of large churches in the in the city itself because there are those many people, right? Uh, so, um, again, yes, uh, because there are a, a lot of churches, uh, they already exist, but uh, the point I'm making is, we can have a lot of churches and a lot of large churches also. Uh, but yes, the point that you made about um, unity and uh, kind of, uh, you know, growing together, that is important. That is very important. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of work to be done uh, here in our nation. Okay. So yeah, uh, thank you, thank you for that point. Uh, anyone else? I think we have only five more minutes left, so uh, we could stay on this topic. Populated country in the world. Yeah, so India needs a lot of big as well as small churches. Yes, yes, yeah. So I think for pastors as such here, there's no need to be insecure because there are enough and more people you know, that, uh, you can reach out to, you can be a blessing to. So that's true, Samuel. That's true. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for uh, staying on a little longer. I know our session has gone over time, but that's okay. We'll compensate for it. So we'll take a 10 minute break right now. Uh, we'll come back at uh, 10.04 and restart with uh, our next session. Okay. So uh, take care, everybody. Let's take a break. 
and we shall be back soon. Thank you.